In 1969, the All Japan Kendo Federation established a set of seven EI forms incorporated from various schools and added three new forms in 1980, resulting in a set of ten. In the year 2000, two new forms were added to the set. Let's take a look at the two new forms. First, Juippo Me Sogiri. Juni-hon-me, nuki-uchi. This video introduces the main points of each of the 12 forms, comparing common mistakes with the correct movements. There's also a model demonstration at the end, which expresses kiken tai ichi, an ideal state achieved when the spirit, sword and body are united in harmony. Take the keito shise or formal standing position, holding the sword in your left hand, and wait for the signal to enter. Transfer the sword to your right hand and bow to the Shinza, a sacred place in the dojo. Transfer the sword to your left hand. Spread out the hakama gently from left to right with your right hand and kneel in place with the left knee first. The Shinza should be to your upper left. Place the sword on the floor sideways before you so that the edge of the blade is turned outward. Focus your mind on the sword and bow towards it. You are now one with the sword. Grasp the sword with your right hand, placing your thumb on the tsuba or guard. With your left hand, pick up the sword near the kojiri or the end of the scabbard and secure the sword in your sash to assume the position of seiza taito, the formal sitting position with the sword in the sash. Focus all your attention on a point on the floor about four or five meters ahead in Enzan no Metsuke, as if you are looking out over a distant hill. Let's take a look at the main points of the twelve basic forms. Grip the tsuka lightly near the tsuba with your right hand, and with your left, grip it near the tsuka gashira, so that your little finger doesn't go over the makidome. Hold the sword securely with the last two fingers of both hands and relax the other fingers. Grip the tsuka lightly as if it were an egg. Ippon me mae. Your opponent is sitting facing you. When you sense that he's about to attack, draw your sword and cleave his temple. Follow immediately with a downstroke. While rising, bring the sword up and then swing it down in the kesa style to perform chiburi. Align your rear foot with the front and then draw your right foot back. Extend your right elbow and replace the blade in the saya. At the same time, lower your rear knee to the floor. Rise and simultaneously align the rear foot with the front and assume taito shise. And now the main points of ippomme. When striking your opponent's temple, make sure that the saya is pushed way back. Bring the sword up close to your left ear and over your head, as if to thrust to the rear. The sword should be parallel to the floor. On completion of the downstroke, the kisaki is slightly lowered. At the end of the chiburi action, 
the Kisaki is pointing downwards at an angle of about 45 degrees. Nihonme ushiro. Assume that an adversary is sitting behind you. When you sense he's about to attack, seize the initiative by turning back and cleave his temple. Follow with a downstroke. Rise and bring the sword up, arc the blade down and outward in the chiburi action. Let's look at the main points of Nihonme. Draw the sword while turning back. Cleave your opponent's temple as soon as you face him. The movement of the feet is the reverse of Ippomme. Sanbomme ukenagashi. When an adversary sitting at your left attacks suddenly, deflect his blow while rising and deal a slanting downwards counterstroke. Open the right hand and re-grip the tsuka with the same hand, palm downwards using a backhand grip, and replace the sword in the saya. At the same time, lower your rear knee to the floor. Let's look at the main points of Sambomme. Turn to the attacker and draw the sword over your head to protect the body. Draw your left foot back and deal a slanting downward stroke. Stop your left fist at the navel. The kisaki should only be slightly lowered. Let's take another look at Sanbon Me Ukenagashi. Yonhon Me Tsukate. You are sitting in Iai Hiza facing an opponent with another adversary behind you. When you sense their attention to attack, strike the front opponent in the solar plexus with the tsuka. Draw your sword and pierce the rear opponent in the solar plexus. Then strike the front attacker with a downstroke. Let's look at the main points of Yonhonme. Strike the adversary precisely in the solar plexus with the tsukagashira. Hold the koimuchi with your left hand and bring it towards your navel. Straighten the right elbow and thrust the opponent behind you. Withdraw the blade and raise the sword high above your head. Face the front and deliver the downstroke. While replacing the blade in the saya, draw the right foot back to the left and take the Songkyo position with the left knee on the floor. Gohonme Kesangiri. You're advancing when suddenly an adversary attacks from the fore. Strike upwards at an angle and execute a return diagonal downstroke. Take the Hasso position for Zanshin. And now for a look at the main points of Gohonme. When striking your opponent with an upward diagonal stroke, your right fist should come up slightly above your right shoulder. Take the Hasso position for Zanshin. Grasp the Koimuchi with the left hand and simultaneously arc the blade down and outward to perform Chiburi. Roppomme Morotezuki. You're advancing when suddenly you sense an attack by three adversaries from the front and rear. First, cleave the right-hand side of the front opponent's face, 
and deliver a double-handed thrust to his solar plexus. Turn back to face the rear opponent and deliver a downstroke. Turn and face the third opponent coming at you from the front and execute a downstroke. Perform chiburi to the right and return the sword to the saya, maintaining the same position. Let's look at the main points of Rokpomme. When striking the right-hand side of the front opponent's face, cleave down to his chin. Lower the sword to the two-down position and firmly pierce his solar plexus. Withdraw the sword, turn, and raise it over your head in the warding-off style. Nanahomme Sampogiri. You're advancing when you sense an attack from the front, right, and left. Bear down upon them and draw your sword. First, cleaving the right opponent, and then deliver a downstroke to the left opponent. Follow with a downstroke to the front. Draw your right foot back and assume morote hidari jodan to indicate zanshin. Arc the sword down and outward to perform chiburi. And now for the main points of nanahomme. When striking the right opponent, cleave down to his chin. Turn and face the left and immediately follow with a downstroke. Turning to the front, raise the sword in ukenangashi and execute a downstroke, ending with your sword parallel to the ground. Let's compare the sword path of nanahomme to that of rokpomme. In rokpomme morotezuki, the blade cuts diagonally to the right. Whereas in Nanahomme, it cuts straight down from the top. When turning, make sure to pivot on your toes. And now let's look at Nanahomme Sampongiri performed at normal speed. You're advancing when you sense an attack from the front and rear. Thrust the tsuka into the front opponent's face. Turn and pierce the rear opponent in the solar plexus. And then turn to the front to deliver a downstroke. Let's look at the main points of Hachihomme. Step forward with your right foot and at the same time thrust your entire sword, saya and all, into your opponent's face and strike him fiercely between the eyes with the tsukagashira. When piercing the solar plexus of your rear opponent, make sure that your right fist is properly positioned above your right hip and thrust immediately. Kyuhomme Soetezuki. While advancing, you sense an attack. Seize the initiative and execute a diagonal downstroke from the right. Pierce your opponent's stomach supporting the blade with your left hand. Without moving your left hand, withdraw the blade and take up a stance with the blade lowered, indicating zanshin. Let's look at the main points. After executing the diagonal downstroke from the right, your right fist should be level with your navel, with a kisaki slightly higher than the fist. When piercing, place the center of the blade firmly between your left thumb and index finger. 
Your right fist should be above your right hip. From this position, pierce with the left hand supporting the blade. When indicating Zanxing, be sure that your right elbow is not bent and that your right fist is not as high as your right breast. While advancing, you sense that you're surrounded by adversaries on four sides. Seize the initiative and use the tsuka to strike the right fist of the upper right opponent just as he's about to draw his sword. Draw your sword and turn your upper body counterclockwise to pierce the solar plexus of the second opponent behind you to your left. Then perform a downstroke to the first opponent in front of you to the right. Then to the third one behind you to the right. And finally to the fourth one to your upper left. Draw back your right foot and assume Morote Hidari Jodan for Zanshin. Swing your sword down and outward in Chiburi. The main points of Juppomme. When striking with the tsuka, give a hard and accurate thrust with the flat of the tsuka. After drawing the sword, press the mune or ridge of the monoji against your left breast. Your right fist should be far from your body. When piercing, bring your left hand towards your navel while continuing to hold the koiguchi. At the same time, tuck your elbows in. Assume the wakingangmaya position with the sword lowered at your side and then raise it overhead. Let's take a look at Juppon Me Shihongiri at normal speed. And now for the newly established form, Jui Pomme Sogiri. While advancing, you sense an attack from in front. Seize the initiative and execute a diagonal downward stroke to the left hand side of your opponent's face, right shoulder, and left hand side of the trunk. Cleave sideways between the hip and waist and execute a downward stroke. Perform Chiburi to the right and return the sword to the saya, maintaining the same position. Now a closer look at the main points. Note the angle at which the diagonal downstrokes are delivered. When raising the sword above the head, the right hand should be towards the right rather than directly above the center line. Deliver the diagonal dance strokes, first to the left hand side of the face down to the chin, then the right shoulder down to the solar plexus, and finally from below the left arm down to the navel. Before cleaving across the trunk between the hip and waist, both hands should be positioned around the left hip. Without any delay, strike the right hand side of the trunk between the hip and waist and cleave straight across. This technique makes it possible to respond to a frontal attack from more than one adversary. The important thing is not to pause between the strikes. This can only be done through skillful positioning of the body, agile footwork and good breathing. A lot of thought must be given to the use of the hands and the path of the blade. Your opponent is standing facing you. Suddenly he draws his sword and attacks. Step back to evade the strike while drawing your sword above your head and deliver a downstroke. 
step back towards the left with your right foot and perform chiburi to the right. Return the sword to the saya, maintaining the same position. And now for the main points. In order to evade your opponent's strike, you must take a big step back with your left and move your body. Raise your sword high above your head and immediately deliver a downstroke, ending with your sword parallel to the floor. When raising your sword overhead, your right hand should be above the center line. Assume Taito Shise and step forward with your right and return to your original position. Let's take another look at Juni Honme Nukiuchi. And now watch the actions after the practice. Sit in the correct position, remove the sword from your sash first halfway with your left hand, and then completely with your right hand and set it upright in front of your right knee. Lay it down quietly to the left with the edge facing inwards so that it's now lying across in front of you. Bow to the sword and then stand it up in the center with the edge facing inwards. Slide your left hand down near the kojiri. Hold the sword in your left hand and stand up aligning your rear foot with the front. Assume the formal standing position, sword in the left hand. Transfer the sword to your right hand and bow to the Shinza. Transfer the sword to your left and assume the formal standing position once again. Step back a couple of steps starting with your left foot, turn clockwise and exit. And now let's look at some of the common mistakes that are likely to be made and how to remedy them. Ippon me mae. When striking at the adversary's temple, the kisaki is too low. The kisaki should only be slightly lower than your right shoulder. When raising the sword overhead, the fists and kisaki are too low. The sword should be parallel to the floor. If the sword is held this way, the kisaki becomes too low. Slightly tighten the hold of the little finger of your left hand. When raising the sword overhead, turn the wrist slightly inwards, raising the blade close to the left ear as if to thrust to the rear. On completion of the downstroke, your left fist should be level with your navel, the kisaki is slightly lowered. On completion of chiburi, the kisaki is too high. The right fist should be level with the left, with the kisaki pointing downwards at an angle of about 45 degrees. Nihonme ushiro. The sword was drawn after turning to face your opponent. This is too late. Strike as soon as you face your opponent. At the time of cleaving, the rear foot is not in parallel to the front foot. The rear foot should lie in parallel to the left foot. Sanbon me ukenagashi. The posture is rather unsteady. 
Distribute your weight evenly on both feet to maintain your balance. The kisaki is too low. When executed correctly, the left hand should stop at the navel with the kisaki slightly lowered. Yonhon me tsukate. When striking your opponent, the tsukagashira is too high. The tsukagashira should be aimed at your opponent's solar plexus. At the time of striking, the rear foot was turned inwards and was not in parallel to the right foot. The rear foot should lie in parallel to the right foot. When piercing the rear adversary, the upper body is unsteady. Be careful not to turn too far. Straighten your right elbow and bring your right fist close to your body. Gohonme kesagiri. When cleaving your opponent with an upward diagonal stroke, do not lean forward. Steady yourself and strike upwards at an acute angle. Note the timing of the downstroke. There should be no pause between the upper diagonal stroke and the downstroke. Execute both strokes in one continuous movement. The drawing of the sword and the cleaving must be done in one continuous action. As soon as the blade leaves the sire, its kisaki strikes the opponent. When drawing the sword, the upper body is not turned enough to the front. Turn the upper body and maintain a steady stance. When thrusting at the solar plexus, the kisaki is too high. Thrust as if you are pressing down the kisaki. Nanahon me sampongiri. Drawing the sword and the cleaving must be one continuous action. Here the sword is raised above the head before the downstroke. This is not a vertical stroke. Draw and strike almost simultaneously. Make sure the kisaki is firm. Here, the kisaki is too low on delivering downstrokes to the left and front opponents. The left fist should be level with the navel and the sword should be parallel to the floor. The tsukagashira is too low. The tsukagashira should be targeted precisely between the eyes. When turning to face your rear opponent, make sure that your feet are in parallel. Turn the right heel outwards so that you are directly facing the enemy. When piercing the rear opponent's solar plexus, the sword should not be parallel to the ground. The kisak should be pointing at your opponent's solar plexus. Bring your right fist in so that it's slightly lower than the kisaki. Kyuhonme soetezuki. The drawing of the sword and cleaving was not done in one continuous movement. Make sure that the kisaki does not lose its speed. Draw and go straight on to the cleaving action. When piercing the adversary's stomach, the kisaki is too high. The sword should be level with your waist and parallel to the ground. Juponme shihongiri. When surrounded by opponents on four sides, it's no use performing each stroke accurately if the action isn't continuous. Let's look at the correct way. The strokes are precise, the action continuous, and there's a sense of rhythm to the movement.
When piercing the enemy behind you to your left, be sure not to bend the elbow in this manner. Turn halfway, straighten the elbow and pierce. Let's look at the correct way. When raising the sword above the head, the right hand should not come directly above the center line. The right hand should be towards the right rather than directly above the center line in order to deflect the opponent's attack. When raising the sword above the head, be careful not to wave it around. The kisaki should remain pointing in the direction of the downward stroke. Do not use tsugiyashi when delivering the downward stroke. Advance in okuriyashi. After cleaving diagonally down from under the opponent's left arm, your left hand has crossed your navel. Upon finishing the downstroke, the left hand should stop at the navel. Note the height of both wrists when cleaving straight across the right hip and waist. The wrists are too high. The wrist should be above the left hand side of your waist. Let's take a close look at how the trunk is cut straight across. And now for another look at Jui Pomme, bearing in mind the main points. Let's see how it's done properly. It's important to take a big step back to evade the enemy's strike while simultaneously drawing your sword and raising it above your head to deliver the downstroke. There should be no pause between the raising of the sword and the downstroke. The idea is to evade your opponent's strike and attack before he recovers, so no time should be lost between the raising of the sword and the downstroke. Upon finishing the downstroke, the sword should be parallel to the floor. Bearing in mind these points, let's take another look at Juni Homme. Finally, let's observe a model example of EI, a combination of mind, sword, and body.
In order to improve your AI, it's essential to have an understanding of the underlying principles of the sword and to aim for a perfect unification of mind, spirit and movement. It's important to master proper breathing and the overall use of the hands to develop sword technique. We hope that all kendoists will come to love EI and make it part of their training to progress both in kendo and EI. And that the All Japan Kendo Federation EI will become even more widespread than it is today.